I think I could talk to, to, to this guy about a hundred different things. His, uh, his crazy little 31-foot trimaran they just sailed to Key West or his busted-ass leg. I mean, a million different things. But Ron White, chief measure and uh, really uh, uh, taking a really active hand in all the safety issues for the Chicago Yacht Club for the Chicago Mackinac race. We all know about the Wingnuts tragedy. You know, some of us were there at the funeral. We know the guys, and, and that's that's over. We also know about this report, kind of bizarre report issued by U.S. Sailing that didn't didn't make a lot of sense to a lot of people. And now we saw the response. A couple days ago, you guys, uh, Chicago Yacht Club, issued the new rules for the 2012 Mackinac race. Right. You're already taking flack. Stability index, uh, uh, J, you know, people saying the J30 can't race and so on and so forth. Can you explain what this response is exactly, how it is going to affect the existing fleet? And um, uh, just go ahead. Yeah, the first of all, it's the new version of the stability index. And anybody that wants to know what the new version is or what's different in it should just download the, uh, the U.S. sailing report. There's an appendix in there that talks about it. Um, and basically, using the new index, which will be published on certificates this year, it'll be a minimum stability index of 103. Um, if you look at last year's fleet, it impacts about six boats that raced last year. Um, and to rattle them off, a couple J30s, a J29, a Mirage 338, uh, and uh, an Antrim 27, and then there's also a couple, uh, a J35 and a Savril 33. Now, out of those boats, there's three of them that we know have some measurement noise, some stuff that uh, is probably not right in their measurement data that can be cured simply by remeasuring. Um, and so certainly we've heard a lot on, uh, on the thread on Sailing Anarchy. Uh, about the J30s, the J29. Um, I've encouraged those owners to uh, talk to the offshore office, uh, find out what specifically they might consider doing to improve stability. Um, it might be a simple matter of adding some lead to the bilge or certainly adding uh, lead to the, to the keel. And, but in, in any case, it means remeasuring. Aside and from it, the expense it of... Mean, uh, right. It will mean remeasuring. Um, we have, uh, without getting real specific, we've offered some assistance to people on the remeasuring to try and get them over the hump. Um, and that's in particular where we've looked at a boat and we see that they've just got measurement noise. Um, we're working with those those people to get that cured and, and clarified. But there certainly will be a few casualties. Um, there are some boats that didn't get contacted in advance, and that was simply a matter of maybe they have done the race previously, and we just missed it in reviewing that, that data. Um, the rumor mill's been on fire there. You know, um, I guess it's the 9-11 conspiracy crowd. Uh, I understand from insiders that uh, we're going to move that number to 110. And um, I, I, I thought I was about as inside as you could get. And so I, I'm really ticked off at some of my crew, uh, my committee members, uh, for holding these conspiracy meetings without me, because I really like being on the inside. But let's talk. <laughs> let, let's let, let. It boggles the mind a little bit, though. And, and there was there's that really famous story of the J30 that you know sailed in after the fast net, after people died and boats flipped, and this guy sails in walking down the dock, and they you know they said they said, well, what were you on? He said, oh that boat there, that little J30. He said, well you know where's your crew? Oh, it was just me, you know. And a, that a boat like that that nobody would think of as a sport boat won't fit is there still i mean is this is this is is using the stability still just so imprecise that it ca catches things like that or are boats like j30s and j29s perhaps really unstable they're certainly at the lower end of the stability spectrum i mean look at it any way you want look at limited positive stability look at stability index there's a basket of boats down at that kind of what's called the bottom 10 percent of the fleet and and uh you know, to, to some degree, math doesn't lie. Um, it, does that necessarily mean they're not safe? You know, we, we had an outside group investigate everything to do with our race. And um, like it or not, 
that's what we did. And we participated and cooperated fully in that process. We didn't try and steer the process. We presented all the facts, all the information, all the work that we've done. Um, and they came back with a set of recommendations. Or they said there were certain things that we needed to do. As a, as a minimum to show, a that, minimum. to show that you're not contributing to anything that could happen right. out there. And so it, it, it poses a real dilemma for us. Yeah. And, um, you know, there were many that thought that we would end up with the ISAF Category 2 minimum of 110. And uh, we didn't agree with that at all. We spent a lot of time, hours upon hours, uh, analyzing, consulting with naval architects, with industry experts, with all kinds of people, in arriving at what we did. And everybody is, from an organizer's standpoint, from the experts that we've consulted with, even the, the panel, um, the, the, you know, everybody's, let's say, comfortable with what we've done. Um, you know, there's a certain libertarian segment of our sport, and I suppose I, I could be accused of being part of that, that says, you know, it's my Harley, it's my head, take your helmet and shove it. And there's, uh, there's uh, centuries of tradition saying just that. There are. There's also, a, there's also a lot of tradition that says minimum standards need to apply. In fact, ROC in the Fastnet race uses ISO sticks analysis now to set minimum standards. The same thing is done in Sydney to Hobart. Um, it's done many places around the world. And so this isn't something... I guess maybe it's, it's newer between the coasts. Um, Newport to Bermuda has minimum stability index. Transpac has minimum stability index. It's out there. It exists. It's in use many, many places. And now we have a circumstance that says we need to use it here. How does that number, that 103 number with the new measurement that do, doesn't use some of those uh, sort of fictitious coefficients? Artificial right. buffers. Right. right. How does that new number compare to the Transpac's requirements or the Sydney Hobart's requirements or whatever? Uh, I, bel I, I I'm going to forget. Okay, I believe Transpac is uh, classified as a Cat One race and has a minimum of 115. Newport to Bermuda also has. Uh, I'm I'm certain they have a minimum of 115. Um, so that would inco if you had a 115, that would have that would that would that would oh, hit, that hit a whole lot of boats, oh, hundreds geez, of boats, right? The race would probably be. 33% smaller, at least, than it is today. But with this, you expect some boats, a very, very small number of boats expect, uh, affected, some of which will be able to mitigate it out, and then a couple of boats can't race, and so be it. But but reality is the the, 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 the vast amount of the fleet's unaffected, and you should have a, a, a bang-up race next year. Correct? I, I hope so. Right. And, uh, and I hope anybody that is impacted currently, that we can work with them, that we can, we can get it resolved successfully. And um, they'll find that there's a lot of cooperation out there if they're willing to avail themselves of it. You know, you guys have never been the kind of kind of kind of club that says this is the way it is and screw you. you you've always been uh, you, you, the guys that want to work and make it make it all as big and and as good as possible. So uh, we're running out of tape, but Ron, thanks so much. Great work. I know you worked so you. hard on this, um, and uh, hopefully it'll. It'll be a great race this year, no tragedy, and uh, we'll, we'll be there. And that's the thing we got to keep our mind on, too. Uh, Mark and Suzanne and, uh, you know, the whole group of Wingnuts folks are friends. Uh, it was a huge tragedy. Um, there isn't anybody that's a part of the, the committee that didn't take a very personal level of involvement on following through on do and doing the right thing in honor of those folks. Uh, I think they'd be pretty happy to, to see that, uh, you know, the, all the bathwater didn't get thrown out here, you know? Yeah, I hope so. Cheers, Ron. Thanks so much. Check it out, CYCRaceToMackinaw.com.